All right, what is up, guys? So, um, what is up, Fury? <laughs> Hello. So, I hope that my getting uh, teary episodes are over. <laughs> I appreciate you guys bearing with me through that. So, uh, those are just some rough scenes for me, man. But as I said, so anyway, chill out, Fury Cat. What are you looking at me for? We got a freaking dragon god to fight, dude. All right. So, let me check my equipment here. Yeah, definitely a blue plate, yellow plate. Okay, we need a black plate on you. So, what the Dragon God does is it goes between, uh, uh, all of the element phases of each of the dragons. So, um, we need to be careful when fighting, because it's definitely a hard fight. Well, not a hard fight, just a difficult fight. This is technically the final boss. Um, even if you were to fight the final final boss in the, uh, the wrong way, um, i.e. not doing the Chrono Cross strategy, um, it wouldn't be as hard as this boss. This is technically the final boss, but regardless, um, let me just put Surge in front. There we go. This scene is pretty dang cool. So the thing we've been searching for all game, the thing everyone wants to get a hold of, the thing we have been so close to but never been able to touch, we get to see now. The frozen flame is here. Go. know the torment and joy of creation know also the pleasure and pain of destruction therefore all that pass through here must be prepared to share the burden that I carry that was a similar thing to uh, how the uh, opening scene sprites looked I love the okay design choice real quick I love that they didn't just walk you right into a scene here that you have to walk up to it is fucking sweet. <laughs> Literal splinter of Lavos's shell. So this is the true frozen flame. Truth? Hold on, don't touch it. Get down, buddy. <laughs> Everyone okay? Screw you. Us humans ain't gonna let you have your way any longer. Come on, show your bloody self. <gasps> By the way, this is one of the coolest boss battle themes ever. In order to survive all living things in this world, fight desperately and devour those they defeat. Must one kill other living things in order to survive? Must one destroy another world in order to allow one's own world to continue? The wounded in turn wound and torment those weaker than themselves. There are only the killers and the killed, the sinners who are judged and the victims that do the judging. What meaning is there in such a world? Good question. Whether there's meaning to our lives or not, we still go on living, you know. You got no right to deny that. I shall cleanse this blue planet of you filthy humans once and for all. All right. This theme is so good.
Oh, well. They still call this the Time Devourer when it's supposed to be the Dragon God. I guess they didn't fix that. They, they call it the Time Devourer. That's not what this is. <laughs> yeah, maybe should have kept the Luminaire for when we fight the black version of him. Although this shouldn't heal, right? Please, he, well... Okay, yeah. I was gonna say, it shouldn't heal. He does, definitely does some ding dang damage. I'll save that for the blue one. We'll just go ahead and heal all minus three here. Because that shit hurts. <clears throat> Alright, Clint, get some damage in there, dude. Wham! throw a carnivore out, I guess. Crunch. Really, the most damage we're going to be doing is from Surge's attacks. Trying to move him into the next phase, which is this. <laughs> which is quite reminiscent of uh, Lavos's final form time warp ability. Like, just bringing you to different er eras and stuff. This just brings you to different areas of the game. So now he's the yellow uh, dragon version. As you can see, his innate just switched to yellow. Which means we can have Glenn throw out big dumb attacks. Because it'll actually do really good damage. Uplift! Look out! Or get healed by it, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, he's doing the order here. Yellow, red, green, blue, black, white. Next should be green. Yeah. I will give Chrono Cross a lot of credit. They are giving you every hint needed to uh, figure out exactly what you're supposed to do here. Not here, but what you're supposed to do to get the true ending. They didn't want you to really, they really didn't want you to miss out on it. So they're giving you every hint they possibly can with that color order. Cry, it started with Cryo Sphinx. 939, Jesus. Oh, you're dead from a dive and drive, dude. <laughs> We're just moving on now. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. So yeah, yellow. Next will be red. Psh. <laughs> Ow! Everybody okay? Not really. <laughs> yeah, look at Surge's damage, dude. It's absurd. He's got something blue in here, right? No, he's got nothing but white stuff. Okay. Well then, I'll use his turn to do a heal all minus three as well. Why not? I don't know what you get from uh, him if you pilfer. Is this where you get the Dreamer Saron? The one that's like uh, full element grid right away? Or is that three element grids right away? I don't remember. I don't remember if there was an item that gave you full element grids the moment you start fighting. Thanks for the heal. Alright, I'm gonna try and pilfer. I'm sure it doesn't change based on what form he's in. I think it's just whatever. What you got for me? 
Holy healing, okay. Glenn, your damage is silly, dude. I'm just saying. I have a Sonic Sword. <laughs> we are saving x Drake for when he's in his final form. Yeah, this is funny because he, like, this is reminiscent of the final form of Lavos uh, doing Time Warp, and uh, him changing into different innates is a lot like the uh, outer shell version of Lavos uh, changing its attack mode into different enemies we've, you've thought, fought throughout history. Super neat, dude. You got yellow somewhere, don't you? Turn yellow. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I guess not. Fine. Well, let's throw a holy light then. We got plenty of them. Kid, I wish you actually did more, like, physical damage, though. That'd be pretty great. Omega green. That's gonna hurt. Anybody it hits, it's gonna hurt. Gah! Yep, she dead as hell. She dead. Alright, we're moving on. <laughs> yeah, getting hit by an Omega really hurts. <laughs> Oh, hey, kid, you're already here. <laughs> okay, we're good. Bang. And then we'll have uh, Two-Tone attack a couple of times, and then hopefully get a heal off. Of, heal all off to help kid out a little bit. Oh, of course. Oh, nice. I like those kind of notifications. I just got a uh, royalty payment. <laughs> Uh, notification for my book sales. That's always nice. <sighs> Yay. Alright, kid. Okay, we're gonna get hit, all of us. No. Alright, I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna have Glenn attack hit with this and that and then I'm gonna have him do a heal all for us and I'm gonna have kid do hot shot actually we can probably get through this without using her hot shot maybe we should just like attack with two-tone and we'll save hot shot for final form uh dragon god oh god bye Glenn oh you're good Well, then I will go ahead and use a regular strength heal all. Because I've got two of them equipped anyway. There we go. Alright, kid, let's just go ahead and do red pin to this thing. Ah, ah, ah. There we go. His face, dude. He's like, ow. <laughs> I can't even float right now. Alright, this is the Black Dragon. We're just gonna do some damage with Glenn and then use Two Tones attacks here. Is this gonna be silly? Jesus. Free fall! Oh, he's gonna get healed by it. Bite me! Wee! Alright. Let me just run his stamina out attacking. I don't think I even have to use freaking elements with him. We're just gonna defend until he gets up to. Okay, holy light. That's gonna hurt. Ish. I guess I should have just been attacking there. 
whatever. Fatigued, oh no. All right, Tone. He's gonna kill with his attacks. There's no reason to freaking do, yeah, dead. There's no reason to do elements there. And now he's back to being the Dragon God, the full Dragon God. So now what we're gonna do is swing in with an X Drake. It's time. That's gonna be so much damage. And we'll build you up and do Hot Shot. Oh, you're fatigued, of course, you're standing a little bit. Got him, doesn't matter. Got you, dude. All right. No victory music here. Poetic, man. Ring of hope. Now I shall truly awaken again. This too is destiny. Yep. It's only quasi-existence. Basically what happened here is we just defeated it, um, but it also was already defeated. I'm going to explain ba basically what Balthazar is going to try to say here, if I have my lore correctly, okay? So the existence in which Dinopolis came about and the Dragon God existed, right? The Reptites uh, timeline uh, was destroyed when... Um, basically, well, not destroyed, but wasn't allowed to come into existence because the apes timeline, uh, being corrupted by Lavos and turning into humans, came about, and reptites were extinct. Um, which means that that timeline was sent to a place that we're going to get described to us in a moment called the Darkness Beyond Time, which is where all discarded timelines end up and uh, are basically uh, set adrift there. You know, they're, they're dead timelines. Um, well, this new life form that we're going to see that is a form of Lavos, uh, ate, basically ate, consumed, devoured, the Dragon God from the discarded timeline and became what it is now, which is the Time Devourer. Along with some other, uh, some other things, obviously, some other reasons why that happened. But regardless, that is, in a nutshell, what Balthazar is about to talk about. The Dragon God is only a quasi-existence, a temporary form that the real Dragon God uses in order to appear in this dimension. The actual Dragon God was consumed long ago, swallowed by that being on the other side of the dimensional darkness. The frozen flame is a splinter from the extraterrestrial being Lavos. The one who connects with the frozen flame, in effect, links with Lavos itself. This goes into a whole huge theory about exactly what Chronocross was supposed to resolve in, a long time ago before the story was changed uh, initially surge because con coming in contact with frozen flame he was supposed to be he was supposed to become the villain at the end of the game that was obviously discarded storyline or perhaps a discarded timeline maybe if we want to be that meta about it but uh yeah that was originally how the story was supposed to go, because he was the final arbiter for the for the Frozen Flame. He was supposed to merge with Lavos and become the Time Devourer. But that didn't happen. As the mediator between Lavos and living things, that one will gain extraordinary powers by binding with the new seed of destruction, the Devourer of Time. When Blazes is a Devourer of Time, <laughs> I'll go to the place where time became divided and weave the threads of time together again, Chrono Trigger. The Devourer of Time is a new life form, born from the fusion of a life form from this planet with Lavos, who nests on the far side of the dimensional void. In the far off future, when the fusion becomes complete, it will awaken. Then the Devourer of Time will begin to consume all space time continua. Despair and hatred, to return all things to nothingness, that is what it desires. Lavos has desires as the Time Devourer. Here, take this with you. 
Thank you. The time egg will enable you to travel beyond space time. The world is in your hands. Go release the life that is imprisoned. Out of here. See you, Dragon God. <laughs> I missed a chest! Mm, motherfucker! I can't believe I missed that shit. <laughs> I bet that was the Dreamer Sarong, too, wasn't it? I swear to God, we should have had it by now. I think it was. I think it is, actually, and I just missed it. Fuck. <laughs> Crikey, what the bloody hell's happening? This place is going to crumble to pieces. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> cool cutscene. About to see the true form of Terra Tower. Dude, it is actually really pretty, if you look at it. Like, not as, like, the home of the dragon god that you just fought, but, like, just as a place. Terra Tower is beautiful, man. And it gets a big old dino head, dude. It's just a big dactyl. That's all it is. So that's Terra Tower's final true form. In the end, we're all the same. Everyone dreams of being greater and more powerful. We have come this far. All that remains is to defeat the Devourer of Time. Once we wipe the Devourer of Time off the face of this planet, it is all over. Hopefully everything will go back to normal again. You're wrong. Things won't ever go back to the way they were. Destiny, fate, is dead. From now on, us humans have to choose our own way in life. We also have to take responsibility for the choices we make. Something's got to be done about the way we go around hurting and killing one another. we got to settle our differences once and for all. Listen, what's really important is what we do now. The issue ain't whether we defeat that bastard or not. I'm afraid that, depending on how we go about it, we could lose out on gaining something really precious. So the issue is the way we fight. So where on earth is the real devourer of time? My guess is the key to that is to finding it lies at that beach. That's where this whole thing started. It's also probably where this whole thing will end. Yes it is. Yes it is. But we have to go and get the Chrono Cross first. I do believe it's in this world. Would make sense for it to be in this world. I think it is. Stina, come along now. <clears throat> All right, let's get the current across. now. Oops, star fragment. <laughs> Starkey's like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> Here we go. The namesake of the whole game, right here. Two halves of a dragon tear from two different worlds merging together. Newtone received the Chrono Cross in all caps, dude. The long lost element. 
No real fanfare there except for the fanfare music. But now we have the Chrono Cross. And look how pretty it is. And it can be put in any ding dang slot. You don't have to have it at the very top. It can go anywhere. Chrono Cross minus seven, as long as the conditions are met uh, to use it afterwards, it doesn't matter what slot it's put in. So we need to actually go about setting up what uh, exactly elements we need, which is one of every color, but we need multiples just in case something goes wrong. I know that for certain. So, first of all, we need to get Steena out of here. Oh, and let's just go ahead and show off the Chrono Cross. I love how they don't put it at the top. It's right here, tucked in. The ultimate long-lost element of the seventh color attribute. <sighs> Alright, man. So, we need... Yellow, red, basically for everybody we need these. So let's bang. Yellow, we need the fireballs off of kids. She doesn't need to have all of them. I guess magma bomb's fine too. We're gonna, yeah, okay. Magma bomb. He's already got one, but let's put one there, too. Yellow, red, green. Blue, black, white. All right, black. Gravity Blow is a level one. Green's the heal hall. He's got white. Uh, pretty much everywhere. I guess we can do a Photon Beam, because it's level one. We'll just put it in the level two, two slot. Or Photon Ray, I'm sorry. There we go. We kind of want everyone to have these. Pretty much every color. Because that gives us the best chance of getting to actually use everything we want to use. Doesn't matter what they do, it just matters what color they are. You've got green. Everybody's got green. That's no big deal. Oh, that's only one. There we go. Turn red. May as well do a weekend. Uh, Aqua Ball. Slants can go like up here over an Aeroblaster or something. Uh, magma Bomb. Go over this Aeroblaster. And white, we can do a weak minded. Over one of the. Actually, we'll do a weak minded over turn red. There we go. Uh, uplift. He's got kind of a small grid, which sucks, but it should be all right. This is a lot about luck. Like, there are ways to go about it that kind of get rid of the luck element, but um, for the most part, it's luck. So let me save. And I'll be right back, I gotta be worse. Before we go into the final fight, I'm not exactly sure how this works, if it unequips you. Um, 
at the end or not. But what I'm going to do is remove every uh, high level element that we want to keep for New Game Plus. Obviously, I'm not going to do New Game Plus anytime soon, but uh, we want to just hedge our bet here. Saints won't come with us anyway. And remove everything that we would want to take with us into a New Game Plus, just in case uh, it's something that happens. Whoop. Now yeah, we'll keep the bushwhacker there, sure. We want to pull all this stuff into a New Game Plus with us. And just in case it doesn't uh, come with us, if we don't remove it, we're removing it. I don't think that's how it works. I think it just unequips it all after you beat the game. And whatever you had equipped just goes into your list. But just in case it doesn't, we're just going to remove it. That's just where I'm at. So our only goal here really is survival. Um, we don't need to do damage, so that's totally fine. Um, and we don't need to get really high in our element grid either. That's not the point. The point is to do our elements in the correct order. That's all. Um, okay, equipment. I'm pretty sure all the Dragoon stuff doesn't come with us anyway, but we're going to take it off either way. We don't want to have the plates equipped. Stone mail all around. Dreamer's bandana might help, but we want to make sure we get to take that with us. Also, we may as well take off the prism, dag prism dagger. Again, we're not worried about doing damage. We don't have a stone dagger. Oh, I have an iron dagger. There we go. Um, Einlander can't come with us. So that's fine. Honor, Glory, and Power Seal, I'm pretty sure it doesn't let us take those. Nor does it let us take the Pendragon Sigils for whatever reason. Um, Einlander is fine. And also, for the sake of New Game Plus, because you have to do, you have to uh, get the ability, if I remember correctly, you have to get the ability to forge rainbow equipment again in the next one. So what we're gonna do is disassemble the Prism Dagger. And we're going to disassemble the uh, Spectral Glove. Actually, you know, that might be one we want to keep around, now that I think about it. So I do a new game plus, I'm probably going to do... Okay, I'm going to take the Spectral Glove out. Because if I do a new game plus, I'm probably going to do the... Um, the... Pierre path at Viper Manor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to forge a Spectra Swallow, which gives us the Spectral Swallow. And it is actually stronger than Master Moon. I was unaware of that. And I'm going to get a Spectral Sword, because Pierre will be able to use a sword. Fargo will be able to use a sword. We will have a Rainbow Sword to use in the next run. Whenever that may be. There we go. Uh, there is a chance that we could disassemble. We have a shiny ember. Uh, we do not have a shiny sand. Let's disassemble that. Uh, don't have a shiny dew. Shiny salt. Thank you. Or that was shiny soot. This is shiny salt. Shiny leaf. Bam. Okay, I could forge Prism Mail now, which is a good piece of equipment that every single person in the game can equip. So, we will forge that and also take that with us into the new game plus. The ultimate armor. We're not going to equip it, but we're going to keep it. I'm glad I got the... Uh, 
<laughs> I am glad I got the achievement, though, before I beat the game. That's cool. Okay. <sighs> so, this may or may not go well the first try, but we will keep trying because we have to save the princess. It is indeed in the other world. So we got an astral amulet over. Also, I'm going to show you guys what the time egg looks like because it is one of the coolest items in the game. If you ever wanted to know what a Chrono Trigger looks like, that's what it looks like. And there's our fake Luca basically over there. Okay, so. I'm actually going to go through all these items real quick just for uh, footage reasons. I guess I could do that with my save file. I don't need to do... Yeah, no, because no, cause I'll have to save after this to get the new game plus. All right. So, as I said in a way earlier episode, um, the uh, thing that I, I, I'm glad about playing Chrono Cross, not just because it's Chrono Cross, but because now we'll have Chrono Cross footage for theory videos. So, I kind of want to look at, like all of these, at least for a second, to use as screenshots for theory videos. Just in case I want to use any of them. Aw, Luca's gun. <laughs> a quick freeze gun Luca made so babysitters could fight fires. I love it. I don't really see myself using the prison key for anything, but... This is allowing me to use this stuff as screenshots if I want to use it. Fiddler Crab looks so cool, dude. And of course the current cross. Safety gear. Prop sword, yeah, that's something that we can actually give to um to Pierre next playthrough. I forgot to give that to Doc. Oh well. I'll just get it again. Yeah, look at the time egg, dude. That is something that I want as an item. Like, as a a thing that I could sit on my desk. Just like the Fiddler Crab, but this way more so. Or, uh, like a, a, um, I guess like a poster would be cool too. Or a shirt. I'm, I'm hopelessly addicted to t-shirts, so. Uh, yeah, the time egg is just so cool, man. Look at it, it's got a void stuck in it. And Time Shifter, and Smith Spirit, and that's it. Okay, so, let's talk to Luca. So you finally made it, Two-Tone. When did this sorry tale all begin? Was it 10 years ago when you almost drowned here? Was it 14 years ago when you were wounded by the panther demon that attacked you? That resulted in you being carried to Chronopolis where you came into contact with fate and the frozen flame. Or perhaps it was 2,400 years in the future when the time crash hurled Chronopolis back to prehistoric times. Or could it have even been 12,000 BC when an ancient magical kingdom met its end after trying to use Lavos? Each is close to being correct, and yet at the same time so far from the right answer. The true beginning was during the destruction of the ancient kingdom of Zeal. Here's the payoff for everybody in the whole world who played Chrono Trigger and always wanted to save her. As the palace collapsed around her, Princess Shala was sucked into a dimensional vortex along with the Lavos Mamma machine. Shala and Lavos became unified into one even more powerful entity that would evolve into the Devourer of Time. Filled with the hatred and sadness of Lavos, half of Shala's mind became set on destroying all of existence. Yet at the same time, the other half of her mind desired to save the universe and to be rescued herself. As Shala fell through the time gate, in this condition, she heard your crying echoing through time. This is when her story and yours began to intertwine. It is also when the past and the future began to intersect, and when the world became divided in two. Led by the pitiful crying the young Two-Tone made as the panther demon's poison took hold of him. Yes, Two-Tone, the sound of your crying touched the heart of Princess Shala. No! Not this time. Before the destructive mindset could become dominant, she cloned herself and sent her copy into this dimension. 
Jala left her baby daughter clone with her ancient magical pendant. This was to safeguard her daughter clone in life and death situations. Kid. The pendant would rewind time a little, sending her daughter clone into a safer point in the immediate past. That's right, Kid is Shala's daughter clone. You're wrong, I'm me. I ain't no Shala's daughter or clone. Yes, that's right, Kid, if that's how you feel. I think Princess Shala would have wanted it to be that way, too. And now, about Project Kid, the time control project Balthazar planned out. This is Balthazar being a crazy person. The whole project existed to lead you to this one special point in time. The founding of Chronopolis, the time crash, and the battle between fate and the dragon gods. It was all coordinated so that you would get your hands on the Chrono Cross and come to this place. We're doing the bidding of Balthazar. Of course, Kid was not to know anything about this whole plan until later when she goes back in time to save you from drowning. Further in the future, she is meant to travel back 10 years in time from now to save Two-Tone from drowning. So now you know why and what that scene means when she's standing on the beach. You are Little Two-Tone. I'm sorry, Little Surge. In my case, you're Little Two-Tone. When she turns around on the beach and smiles and leans down and like pats you, it's because you are a little kid she just saved from drowning. Because she travels back in time from the future to stop it. After this point, just. It, this game is so much about determinism, where Chrono Trigger was about, uh, you know, the malleability of time and space. And this is so much about everything was predetermined. The whole reason we're here is because Kid saved us from drowning after this point in the future. She's meant to do that. So. Here we are. Kid was also meant to call Two-Tone into the other world as, she, as he spoke with Lena here on Impossa Beach, which is what happened. You're our last hope, our final chance. Only you, who came into contact with Shala and Kid, Shada's clone daughter, can do it. In the darkness that exists on the other side of time, Shala has been integrated with the Devourer of Time. Please, Two-Tone, release Princess Shala from the binds of that master or that monster and her own hatred. Show us, the life forms that exist on this planet, what our new future will be. What's up, Chrono? You won't. There we go. Where even angels lose their way. Ten years ago, you died at this very spot. There's no mistake, you drowned. Truth is, this world in which you are still alive is the irregularity. This is the false reality. Ten years ago, it was Lynx who tried to kill you at this beach. Except that it kind of wasn't, and was. After Prometheus broke the link between fate and the flame, fate tried to eliminate any obstacle that stood in its way. In the meantime, the six dragons had sent Harl forth to try and gain possession of the flame. Harl made contact with fate's biological incarnation, Lynx, and tricked him into temporarily joining forces. The elimination of the Prometheus Circuit's lock on the frozen flame was everyone's top priority. Lynx and Harl abducted Luca, who alone could release the Prometheus lock that guarded the flame. But the whole attempt only ended in failure, so they waited for you to appear instead. You see, fate calculated that you would one day cross the dimensions and try to make contact with the flame. I don't know how to break this to you, but Lynx was actually your father, Wazuki. Drawing closer to the flame caused him to become unstable, and the image of you dying in terror changed him completely. Finally, after having his psyche totally eroded, he lost his soul and was easily integrated by fate. Fate turned Wazuki into a biological interface, modeling him after your worst fear at the time, a panther. Although Wazuki managed to escape from Chronopolis with you, he later completely succumbed to fate. Humans are such fragile, disjointed, imperfect things. Love and hate, life and death. Perhaps even fate itself dreamed of, of using the flame to someday reincarnate itself into a new species. Gee, sure sounds like something a mother brain would do. Way to use that as your frickin' base to create a new computer, Balthazar. <laughs> it's quite sad, really. It's like when you gaze into the flame, the flame gazes back into you. Thanks for the Nietzschean reference there, Chrono dude. Hey, Marl. 
A new species is about to be born on this planet, an alien life form even more evolved than the old Lavos. At the darkness beyond time, the weak Inshallah came under the influence of Lavos, and the two became one entity. It is now up to you, the one whom the frozen flame has chosen as its arbiter. You alone can decide how the new Lavos, which is in caged Shala within it, will evolve from here. Your actions will, will determine whether in the future all time is devoured by Lavos, sending the world into everlasting death. Balthazar foresaw this was going to happen in his world in the year 2300, and he was determined to prevent it from happening no matter what it took. Chronocross. It alone can combine the sounds of the planet that the six types of elements produce. The melody and harmony that brim, brim within all life forms. Use this song of life to heal her enmity and suffering. We entreat you to tune. Please save Shala. Right after I save. <laughs> Having talked to you now. <clears throat> so, yeah. That is the gist of it. Balthazar knew that Shala was going to merge with Lavos because Lavos was defeated by Chrono and company and was... Um, and because that happened, Lavos was sent to the darkness beyond time, where Shala was, and merged with Lavos. Lavos merged with Shala. I think that the reason this is, this supports my theory, okay? This supports my theory that Lavos' fully evolved form, at the time when he was defeated by Chrono and company, had integrated humans into it by battling against you. Gain the ability of manipulating time because of, uh, you know, your ability to manipulate time, or run, go back and forth through time. And, uh, it, because of the fact that it in integrated real human, your, your, specifically your party's, uh, humanity into it, it gained emotions and purpose, rather than being a mindless parasite. So then when it went to the darkness beyond time after being defeated, it actually had the emotion of vengeance and anger, right? And then Shala merged with it, and that took over half of her mind was Lavos's anger that had been defeated. Had anger at have had been defeating. Ah, I can't. Words. Sorry. His anger at having been defeated. Thank you. There we go. Holy shit. Anyway, uh, so he wanted to take revenge on the entirety of time and space, right? Uh, just to spite Chrono and the team. Um, Balthazar knew that was all going to happen. And he was basically manipulating the frozen flame to uh, get Lavos to cause the disaster which drug Chronopolis back in time and made the Dragon's God's uh, Terra Tower appear in that time period, made the war between humans and the Dragon Gods happen, made the Dragon God come to life, blah, 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 blah. It is very complicated, okay? All you need to know is that basically none of this is Shala's fault. And basically all of it is Balthazar's. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, huh, just the craziness that has to happen for this to get to this point, but it was all for this point. Um, if you could legitimately say, holy shit, it would be better if, you know, you just had the Colonel Cross when you woke up and could walk to the beach and win. That's what New Game Plus is. New Game Plus is literally what... It just skipping everything to the point where you could actually use the time egg to get to the um, the darkness beyond time. So, anyway, holy shit, I'll be right back. I gotta go get a snack. Fury Cat, are you coming? I know, I'm, I'm delaying the final battle quite a bit, but we'll get it done, I promise. We're gonna jump in. We're gonna jump in. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I bet the neighbors love you, Fury. Because your Kitty Tower is right next to the window, and there's a window that faces directly over here. <laughs> You're looking now, aren't you? I seriously, I bet that my neighbors love him. They probably <laughs> come home, and they're like, is he there? <laughs> and he's just laying on his... Looking across to him from the window. 
<laughs> You're so funny, dude. All right, y'all. No more stalling. Let's save Shala. Let's line up first and actually use it correctly. There we go. No beginning and no end to the darkness of time? I mean the darkness beyond time. What? Darkness beyond time, let's go. The final gate which leads to the darkness beyond time. I wonder why they changed that. Looks like this is finally it. Come on. It's time to bring this chapter to an end and create a brighter future. Come on, Two-Tone Mate. You don't want to keep the girl waiting any longer. She's been waiting for you and only you and for over 10,000 years, I might add. No, I'm sorry. She's been waiting for us since Chrono Trigger. Damn, dude. This is so... Mmm! Mmm! I'll talk about it later. Let's just get to the damn fight. The world's gonna be destroyed and let it be destroyed. If history's gonna be changed, let it bloody well be changed. I'll show you what Radical Dreamer's really about. Kato, let me just say you're a genius. And yes, I love that there's no music for this fight. Out of every other fight in the game, this makes total sense that there's no music because we have to create it. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to bring our element grids up as high as we can. He's doing a green element, which starts off, or doesn't start off, but we want to wait for him to do a green element uh, after we do some damage, we get our element grids up. That's precisely what we're waiting for. You see that little orb that showed up up there? That shows you where you are in the queue of elements, in the notes of the song. So there we go. Tornado, okay. He does not do weak elements. Just saying. So, what we want to do here is we want to throw a yellow element and then a red element. But we want to throw a yellow element and then we want to try and get two-tone stamina back up. So we don't want to lose stamina. Now we want to throw a red element. Not going to be a red pin, because we want to keep our element grid available. Like, all levels of it available. Yellow, red, and then green. He should do a green. If he does not do a green, we reset it. But, uh, that's fine. Okay, yellow. Alright, he started it over. Which is... Sort of okay. What we want to do is wait for a green element, basically. Um, well, now we can go ahead and throw a heal all because we need it. So we want we want to wait for him to do a green element because it's just the most uh, convenient because it's right in the middle of the sequence. So we want to throw. A yellow now. Glenn only has one yellow element, so we're going to go to you instead. We don't really have a lot of yellow elements in case this goes wrong. Okay, so we'll have you do uplift. And then we'll throw a red element. And then we'll see. Now we could always try and just hope he's going to do the element we want after this, but we have to work with Lavos here. So I could try a green here, but it's just so convenient to have him do a green. 
because then we can go blue, black, white, Chrono Cross. So we want to see if he's going to do a green. He did yellow again. Okay. So this is what I mean by getting lucky here. So he did yellow, I guess we could do red. Let's just try and do it over again here. Yellow, red. And then we'll do a green. We just want to keep our stamina up. Is the problem. Now we want a blue. So we want a blue, black, white. But we have to get two-tone stamina back up is the problem. And now he'll do a move. He did white. Damn it. I was hoping that was going to be black. Okay, so now we're kind of out of elements. Which is fine. Um, what I'm gonna do is run here. And then we'll go back to the fight and try it again. Um, again, this is the, the difficulty of winning the fight. Is we need to do a very specific sequence of shit. We have to save Shala. We can't just beat Lavos. But luckily, we have all of the darkness beyond time in the world to do this. So what I'm just gonna do is do a level three. There's green. And he will do another green in a second. So, I'm just going to switch to kid. Go. Do a three. Go. Alright, so. What we want is to... Oh, your uplift plus three is... Plus two is all the way up here. Okay. So yeah, we don't want you doing the yellow. So, turn yellow. And then Kid does a fireball. And now we wait for Omega Green again. Brought some stamina back. That's good. Yellow, you bastard. He reset us again. Okay. Deluge. Okay, yeah, he's he's random as fuck. <laughs> it's very much managing stamina. Now we got the flu. Okay. So. Start it over here. Yellow.
I think we should do a green this time. Screw it. He probably will not do, um, Deluge again. But he probably won't do black either. Maybe, maybe he's on white now. We should get to kid's turn now. I miss... Miss, uh timed my stamina here cuz so he's going to get a turn I needed I needed two tone to have stamina here so that Glenn could do white Now he's doing black. See, yeah, we screwed it up. Oh Yeah, okay, we're gonna have to run again here. Again, this this can be very annoying. I'm sure there are perfect setups that have to do with exactly Lavos's attack power. Or not attack power, but attack pattern. But I'm not fully aware of Lavos's attack pattern, so there you have it. I know he starts with green most of the time, so... It would not be the worst idea to just immediately throw out yellow. And then go to my next character and throw out red. Instead of... Switching to each one and building them. I think we need to go by what he's gonna do. It's just a pain to try and, like, get him to do exactly what I want. Alright, yellow. See, I shouldn't be doing level 3s there. I should be doing level 2s so that he has full stamina. Bastard, doing blue to me. Uh. See, yeah, we don't have... Now we don't have a... We have to get lucky on the freaking move that he decides to do. After we build up yellow again. Like, after we throw yellow-red, we have to hope for green. Stamina's looking good, right? Okay, she's gonna be out, too. This should get us in the right rhythm, dude. Yellow... Bring Glenn up. Okay. Blue. That should give two tone stamina back. White, you bastard! Uh. This is what I mean, dude. 
It's almost like we have to make sure that we... Okay. He is just trolling me now. We can't out... We can't just have turns more than he has turns is the problem. Because we always go out after we uh, use an element. And we have to use attacks. <clears throat> And he's random as shit. Okay, yellow. All of his reds are up here, Jesus. Should give Glenn enough stamina? Okay. Black. Now I have to take an attack. Kid is not going to have enough stamina after this. We really don't want him to be doing white either. He doesn't even have it. You son of a bitch. Uh. Okay. Damn you, Lavos. You're making this way more difficult than it should be. I think I need to put stamina rings on. I hate to lose them for the new game plus, but... Yeah. I need stamina recovery rate pretty badly here. I'm sure there's something else that improves stamina recovery. Yeah, stamina, be stamina belt. There we go. Actually, that should probably be on... Surge. I'm gonna have to make sure he's got the right amount of stamina. using the Chrono Cross as well. Um, also... There, now you have a way to do yellow. There we go. Get me in there, dude. <sighs> All you really need to do is get Lavos to, uh, frickin' comply, and you're fine. But it's very hard to get Lavos to comply, because he's Lavos. <laughs> We're just going to be starting over. See how far we can get into 
the song. Each time. Keep forgetting is red and green. So it's yellow, red, green, blue, black, white. Stamina is definitely recovering at a better rate here. Blue. Fuck you. <laughs> Damn it. He's always like an element ahead or an element, element behind of what I would like him to be doing. I'm going to go ahead and assume he's going to do green here. Yellow. Eh. So yeah, what I want him to do is a green element. That's all there is to it. I need to throw my yellow, red, green, or my yellow, red, and hope he does green. That's all. He just did yellow. Why did I do yellow? I'm silly. We're gonna do green. Because if he does blue, we are in excellent shape. that means he's on green now. Probably not. It's like he's doing them in reverse. Sort of. Not even really. There's no, there's no rhyme or reason, dude. There's like no rhyme or reason to how he does his attacks. It's totally rando. Blue. Just starting it off is impossible sometimes. <laughs> uh. attack to bring stamina back. He got a turn. He did blue. Uh. Yeah, 
Hang in there with me, I'll hang in there with you. We got sprains and burns now, too. this all night, Lavos. You know how many times I've kicked your ass? In more ways than you can imagine. Starting with a green, huh? After one attack, huh? For shit's sake, kid. Oh, life is wonderful, isn't it? When you're in the darkness beyond time. And now he starts with green twice. Alright, I guess we're gonna freaking heal. And he's probably gonna start us off with yellow this time. Actually, last time, what did he do? Did he do yellow last time? What attack pattern is this? I have no idea. <sighs> he's doing so much green. I'm going to assume he's going to continue doing green. Please do green. Again. That would be great. You won't. You're gonna restart the whole thing with a yellow element. I know you. Freaking knew it, dude. So we are going green, yellow. Okay, well at least he started us off one way, right? So we'll do red. Red. Green. Fuck, they're at, uh, well, no, yeah. Kid and Glenn are out of stamina. Let me think here. The red, green, blue. Black, white is next. Kid will get stamina from me just casting something, but Glenn will not. I have to cast black. That should get me stamina back. That did not bring Glenn's stamina up. Kid is going to have to do an attack. Because Two-Tone is going to have to throw the Chrono Cross. She can't miss. He can't do an attack unless it's white. Fuck! Ugh. He's just the antithesis of what I'm trying to do, dude. Every freaking time. When I have my stamina correctly, he's just like, nah, dude. And now he'll probably do white, but I'll never get back up to black in time. Because the whole point is trying to get two tone stamina at a good spot. All right.
dude. <laughs> Why does he have to be so random? We basically have to get lucky. We have to load everything up with yellow elements and just hope he does green. That's the only way we can get to it. Come on, man. Jesus. And there's green. So is he gonna do another green after this? Gonna be a mega green after this? Because if that's the case, I am throwing uplift. And I have to do this to try and get freaking Glenn's stamina back up, dude. That's the whole point, is... We need him to do green so we have stamina on everybody to go through and do the rest of it. Green. Yellow! You son of a bitch! So, we're just gonna keep farming until he does a green element where I need him to. That's all. That's all we can really do. <sighs> and we're burned. We're actually gonna reset here. Alright, let's try a different setup here. Let's actually get level 1 elements instead of having, like, higher level elements on the beginning of our grid here. Yeah, let's get aqua beams. You don't have enough shit, lady. I gotta go see Lisa. She's my... She's my element chick. She's got everything. Yeah, we shouldn't have... All the low... All the high stuff on the low, I don't think. I think we actually have to have level 1 elements. Because I think that's causing the stamina drain... To happen more. We actually need to buy, like, uplifts and fireballs and stuff and like bushwhackers aqua beams I think I bought those yeah buy these uplifts there we go and I've got gravity blow out the butt and photon rays yeah Let's do put a turn right there. Let's put the photon ray. You have a photon ray. Uh, let's actually give you. You should have a bushwhacker, right? Everybody should have the same shit, probably. So that we can't possibly not get it right. Bushwhacker, Aqua Beam, Fireball, Photon Ray. I don't think yeah, that's not every element, but I think you'll be fine. You need to have like a Bushwhacker instead of a Heal All there. You have Uplift. Aqua Ball should go over turn B, or Aqua Beam should go over turn blue or something. Um, you have a Photon Ray, Fireball, have a Bushwhacker. Um, you have Aqua Beam, Uplift, Fireball. I think that's gonna be the answer. I think because we use like the minus three elements, it's actually causing more stamina drain, maybe? I could be totally off base about that, but... Uh, I suppose we'll find out if this is the best way to do it. <clears throat> so, my plan is... 
I'm going to wait until he does a green element. Because that's how I remember winning this shit. Is getting him to do a green element. Preferably something like Omega Green because it's a big attack. And it'll probably cause him to, like, have less turns. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think we're going to throw... I don't think we're going to throw yellow red and then wait for omega green. I think what I want to do He has other omegas too. I think what that does is cause him to have less time or more time between his next attack and more and less time for him to do stuff in between us doing stuff. <laughs> so I think we can actually successfully have enough stamina to do it all in one go, including the Chrono Cross. If he uses a big fat Omega Green or something. Something high up on his element grid, right? So we're gonna build everybody up to the top. Of course, that would happen. Okay, there's an Omega Green. That means that's like his highest attack move, right? Or his highest grid move. So... Hmm. Let's start here. And I forgot to put an uplift on him. Let's do it with... Let me just get everybody all the way up. Let's just do that. Let's get everybody to freaking level 8. And just wait for him to do that again. Because as you can see, we're able to attack a bunch more times waiting for him to do this. Okay, there you go. Perfect. He did Omega Green. Glenn is at one stamina, but I don't think that's a huge problem, right? Okay, let's uplift. Let's start, let's just start going. Yellow. Red. Yeah, it drops him to out one instead of out four or whatever the hell it is. Blue. Glenn's out. Damn it. I needed him to not be out. Okay, he's got stamina back, but two tones out now. Which is bad. <laughs> it's all about stamina management, and I think we can actually do it. Yeah, we're about to all be out of stamina here. I can't attack, I can't do an element, because that gets us all completely out. Like, we're all the way up. We're at white now. All we'd have to do is throw the Chrono Cross, but he's going to get to do an attack. So... Oh! Yellow, red, green, blue, black, white. Chrono Cross, we fucking did it. Welcome back, Princess Shala. I knew it had to do with my stamina. Anyway... Devourer undone. What a cool friggin' achievement. Uh, 
I've done this so many damn times, but it's still so freaking satisfying. <laughs> Welcome back, Princess Shala. It is very strange that you look like what you look like. So yeah, like everyone else in the world who played Chrono Trigger and got to this point, you expected to see old, tall, blue-haired Shala, and then you see a little kid with blonde hair, and yeah, just, you weren't expecting it. There's some theories there, but I'll save that for a, a theory video, but this is the true ending. This is what you're meant to do. is play her song to free her. This is what I mean by music meaning so much to this game. We basically told Lavos, hey, we're gonna be one with the planet and we're gonna use the song of our planet to free the Zelian princess. And now we have the true ending. I've been waiting an eternity just for this very moment. Not allowed to cry. <laughs> the ending, dude. This is no. Not friggin' three episodes of tearing up, man. Meaningly hurting one another, the disappearing life forms. Love to hate, hate to love. Why are we born? Why do we die? Evolution? The survival of the fittest? What is there to be achieved from harming one another, killing one another? Okay, so, are you even kind of surprised that my my intellectual passion outside of writing, of course, is philosophy? It came from playing these games, man. The eggs that we call planets, and the innumerable spermatozoa, the life forms which gather around them. When one of those countless seeds is joined with a planet, a new universe is born. All this exists for that one moment, also that the universe can evolve into the next dimension. Does that make us all just pawns, or each of our short lives nothing but a cheap sacrifice just so the one chosen life form can be born? No, that is not the case. Each and every one of us has a chance of becoming that one chosen life form. Yes, it could be you. Each of us tries to do our best with the hand we're dealt, be it our genres or the environment or our genes, genres, <laughs> our genes or the environment we live in. Each life form struggling to make the best of the life it's given forms a link in the golden chain that leads to the creation of a new universe. Every single thing in the whole of nature is perhaps just dreaming a dream of life. All of them are also perhaps nothing more than a dream dreamt by a planet before its birth. Oh, but yes, eventually all dreams will return to Zervan, the Sea of Dreams. Zervan is a whole other topic. <laughs> Two-Tone, don't go yet, Two-Tone. It's all right. Everything is all right now. Time, which has been divided, will be unified again now. The time for farewells has come. You will lose all memory of this whole adventure. Mm, no! Then return to your own time, but this time you'll be able to live your own life. Yes, I will continue to follow my brother's footsteps as a great dragon. Good luck to you two, Tone. I look forward to the next time we meet. <laughs> we alone do not have the power to heal the world's woes or to solve all its mysteries. And yet even then... It was bloody good knowing you, mate. Thanks for being born, you. I guess now's the time to say see you later, mate, but I'll find you sometime, somewhere. I'm bloody sure of it. No matter the time, no matter the world you live in, I'll find you. Sure, I'm sure I will find you. <laughs> this theme is amazing.
What's up, Lena? All right, what's the matter? Scare me like that. You just passed out all of a sudden. What, Terra Tower? Fate? What are you talking about? We just got here. You got some Komodo Dragon Scales for me, don't you remember? You sound confused. Come on, Two-Tone, get with the program. Our summer's only just started. How about that shit? Before he ever got transferred to the other world. Get your diary, Shala, dude. It makes me sad. such a good theme. Okay. First of all, there's a lot of things to go over with just these ending scenes. But, okay, you remember how I told you that Kato <laughs> is incredibly meta? God, genius! Genius. Fucking genius. Okay, so... Remember how I said he's, you know, a genius just now? The letter from Luca was to us. Not just kid. So was the last entry in Shala's diary was to us. Um, because if you if you go far enough far enough back and you remember playing Chrono Trigger for the first time, you remember the storm of how many people cared about Shala and wished that she survived the Ocean Palace disaster and we should have gotten her on our team and she was there's so much more of her story to be told that is why Chrono Cross exists Shala is the entire reason it was a gift it was a resolution to Shala that fans of Chrono Trigger had been waiting for for so long <laughs> and that was what this was so Damn you, Kato. Anyway, looking at the scenes that are going on at the ending here, the in-between ones, not the gameplay, but we'll wait for the next one to pop up. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, it's understood by a lot of the fandom Basically, this is theory crafting because we have no idea, but um, the gameplay, like the actual game's history, uh, it's basically Shala, like, okay, so an ideal timeline is created. Um, I don't know, I mean, I don't remember if that is said 
at the end of this, like during the credits or whatever, I'm so sure that you were you like that she talks about an ideal timeline being created uh, before this ending. Um, but yeah, basically, an ideal timeline is created. The times are merged, and ideal. Who knows what that means? But in this ideal timeline, Shala apparently is part of our world and is still looking for Surge. She apparently retains her memories. But, uh, yeah, um, there's a lot to discuss about this ending. Um, so, yeah, basically Shala and Kid merge together as one character again. It's, it's strange, man. It is very hard to discern exactly what this ending means. Um, but there will be a, uh, a theory video about it, I promise. Um, when my mind is a little more clear and not being killed by nostalgia right now. Ugh. But she's always looking for you. She will always be looking for you forever and ever. Some people look at that like there's some really meta uh, takes about that where it's like... Because there, not only is Surge... Was there the, the idea that Surge was supposed to be the main villain or whatever eventually, but that Shala still harbors some hatred for the human race or something because of her time with Lavos and that like the ideal timeline leads to her destroying all of humanity or something. I, I don't know. It's, and she's like stalking surge. Eh. Anyway, this is the real indicator here. And that's kid's necklace, of course. So yeah, is that really sweet, or is that creepy? Who knows. But yes, we get the payoff of Shala Kid actually standing on the beach. And there you go. Chrono Cross, Radical Dreamers Edition, in the bag. In the books. I am really, really glad. I was very self-conscious about playing this game. You guys don't, I mean, you do understand. I'm not gonna condescend and say that you don't understand my feelings with this game because I'm not the only human that exists, you know? And I'm not going to think that my subjective experience of the Chrono series is any any deeper than anyone else's. Absolutely not. Because I understand that because of how much this series has touched my heart as a game player, as a lover of story, as just who I am, that it absolutely has done the same for others. Um, so... I was really self-conscious about playing through this because it's almost like playing through a current trigger for me on the channel in front of people. Uh, this, th like, I was so afraid of... I've always been so afraid of doing a Chrono Trigger playthrough because I know I'd sob like a child at the ending, like I always do. But I sobbed like three times in this, man. Um... It's something I can't help, and I'm glad I did it. I'm glad that it was on camera. Like, I can't be ashamed of it, man. I'm not ashamed of how these games make me feel. It's just like... It's just like crying at a movie or uh, at, a, at a really good book. 
anything. So, anyway, we need to move on and save for our new game plus if we ever decide to play it again, which we probably will because I'm going to have to get footage. If I ever want to do a character spotlight or a video in general about the Mystic Knights, I'm going to need footage of fighting them in Chrono Cross. Um, so, yeah, that's probably going to happen at some point. I want to thank you guys a ton for hanging out with me through this playthrough. Yes, there are some things that I will say this version of Chrono Cross really messed up. Um, like, if we want to get down to brass tacks here, first of all, family feud instead of sisterhood, why? Why change that? Uh, the darkness of time instead of the darkness beyond time. The whole point is, the darkness of time doesn't make any sense, but the darkness beyond time does. You know what I mean? Like, beyond time means that it's beyond time and space, and that's where Lavos is. The darkness beyond time is where timelines go to be discarded, where he eats them. Um, anyway, uh, that was a little weird. The frickin' scene at the top of Fort Dragonia when you get your body back, and how the mural was not lit up. That it was the probably the biggest sin of the remaster here, if I have to be honest with you. Um, after a while, also, something I will say, uh, this was something that my buddy Jared mentioned, uh, before the game even came out when we just watched the trailers. He thought, and I tend to agree with him a little bit more now, having played through this, the style they chose for the font, and, like, the way the numbers looked, the way that the, uh, like, names of elements looked in the grid, and when you attacked with them, and how, like kind of sterile they are the text was a bit jarring at times rather than you know soft and you know it, it it's pretty jarring at how like sharp the letters look you know um as far as the graphics the graphics looked fine to me um the the character models looked just fine they were just upscaled a little bit the background suffered a little bit i think uh, from the upscaling because it's very hard to do that from PS1 to now. Now, if you remodeled re, uh, all of the backgrounds, they would look amazing, but you can't do that uh, very easily, I should say. Now, I do agree to an extent with some of the con comments that I've seen about Chrono Cross and about like Final Fantasy uh, Pixel Remaster and stuff is... Square does not give the time and effort it takes to really uh, show the love for these old games that that they should. You know what I mean? These are the games that made Square. And they, they kind of just say, okay, well, upscale the graphics and what the hell ever. Just throw it out there. Instead of really really trying with these games like I'm never going to to like give them shit for doing this but I will give them a little bit of shit for not doing more right it is very nice to have a way to play Chrono Cross that is not just on PlayStation let me put it that way obviously we can do it with a PS1 emulator and it would probably run a hell of a lot better than this but not everyone in the world is going to have a PS1 emulator uh, not everyone in the world is even going to know what an emulator is, even in this gener this new generation of gamers. But Steam, they're going to be like, okay, what the hell is Chrono Cross? Let me play it. New generation of gamers are going to see what this game is. And a lot of those new generation of gamers have played Chrono Trigger too because it's come out on so many platforms. And now they're going to see the sequel and have all new takes on it and all new perspectives on it and get to experience the things that I experienced when this game came out, but in different ways, right? Like, they're probably not going to cry at Luca's letter, you know? They're not going to think deeply upon it. I have that experience subjectively, and they'll have their own. But then one day, when they're older, and they think, man, I should go back and play those games, they're going to remember how they felt when they first played it. And that just means the world to me as a gamer. Um... And just getting to create new memories associated with these games that already have so many loaded memories upon them from my life of playing them. You know, like, playing this game for the channel is a new memory 
of Colonel Cross that I will never, ever forget. And getting to talk to you guys about it and seeing how much you love the series too. And and just the the just the chatting we've done and uh, either way, Chrono Cross is an amazing game. No one should give it shit. Um the closest thing to a like a a harsh criticism I have ever had for Chrono Cross is that um if they had made this sort of a game and not made it part of Chrono the Chrono series this would be a cult classic for so many people that's the biggest downfall it has for perception I think and reception uh, is that there was already a fan base expecting something uh, from the Chrono series I was guilty of this you know at first I didn't like the new way that the system worked you know and if this had been a one-off game that had nothing to do with the Chrono series, didn't have the Chrono name in its title, and all of these characters had nothing to do with Chrono Trigger or its cast, um, people would love this game. Uh, unconditionally, like crazy. They'd be talking about how, how it's a hidden gem on the PlayStation, you know. But because it has the word Chrono in the title, and because it does reference Chrono Trigger in a lot of ways and, and is a continuation of the story in a lot of ways uh, it was held to a very high regard, high standard and that was something that was really sad for it because how do you follow the greatest video game of all time very hard so in that aspect I will say that Chrono Cross did its very best to follow that and what can I say it is from Kato it is his brainchild therefore what we think about it doesn't matter um, it does matter in that we can interpret it how we want and it makes us feel certain ways and, and whether or not we love it or hate it it's, it's drawing an emotion out of us one way or the other but it's his vision um so we can judge it, we can critique it, nothing is above scrutiny, but at the end of the day, this is what it was meant to be. So thank you everybody once more for hanging out, and I will see you all soon for the next long playthrough. I've also got a surprise for you guys coming up very soon in one video, but uh, yeah, uh, it's something I've been working on for a couple of days, and I'm sure you'll like it. But either way, thank you all for watching. Thank you for joining me for the journey through Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers Edition. And I will see you all next time. Peace.